Hello, hello! And welcome back as I get ready to take the team to grappling hook school. In Perfidious Pete plays XCOM War of the Chosen. Last episode, it's, it's a perfect example of why Perfidious Pete hates Squirrel Girl. Squirrel Girl Pete, why are you bringing up Squirrel Girl? Eh, not just Squirrel Girl, it's really all Moxie heroes, but like especially Squirrel Girl since she's sort of the epitome of Moxie heroes. But I hate champions who get by on pluck, chutzpah, and a can-do attitude. Because you know what? It's just, damn it, that's not how the real world works. It's just, it's not. The real world does not function in that, that capacity. You can't stop a tidal wave from destroying your village just because you feel that deep down in your heart of hearts, belief is all it takes to change the world. And yes, no world event changes ever happen without belief, blah, 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 blah. Sure, belief helps, etc. What not? Okay, fine, I'll give you that. Faith and dedication are a part of the building blocks of success. They are. But they aren't all you need to succeed. They aren't enough to build the whole building. They're just some of the foundation. You also need a solid plan, a reasonable assessment of your own abilities, and an exact knowledge of the assets at your disposal. All of those things are also required. Belief does not equate good project management. A good project manager has faith in his or her abilities, yes, but also they still order the evacuation when they look at the spreadsheet and realize that they don't have enough K-rails, sandbags, manpower, and equipment to get a makeshift seawall in place in time to stop the tidal wave. Meanwhile, your Squirrel Girl Variety Project Manager looks at the situation, sees the spreadsheet, and says, You know what the hell with the numbers? And tells everybody to walk down to the beach, link hands, and use the power of belief to stop the onrushing tide of water. The first type of Project Manager, they save lives through informed decision making. The second type, the Squirrel Girl Variety, they leave a beach strewn with bloated waterlogged corpses for the rescue workers to clean up a week later when the waters have receded. It's like the thing in Hurricane Harvey, and yes, you know, it's terrible devastation, and Houston will rebuild, I'm sure, stay strong. But did the, the founders in Houston, when they looked at the situation, they had people who refused to evacuate, those people with can-do moxie spirit? Did they be like, oh, congratulations, you noble warriors, I'm sure the hurricane won't destroy your house. No, what did they do? They said, well, people are idiots, and then they gave them the practical advice of, please write your name and social security number on your arm so when you die, we can identify your body. How does any of that relate to last episode, Pete? I, I don't know. I just Squirrel Girl really troubles me. And I think it, it really boils down to the fact that we had two varieties of hero on the last mission. One, Outrider Elena Dragonova. She's the first type of project manager. She looked at the spreadsheet and said, boy, there's a lot of loss down here. We need to get the fuck out of this town. And you know what? That's why she made it out alive. Meanwhile, Mox, our skirmisher, who actually I kind of liked better than Dragonova. I thought skirmishers seemed pretty good. But uh, what did he do instead? He's like, no, I can stop the, the horde of undead, this onrushing tide. I shall not get past me. I will not die this day. And what happened to him? Got his ass kidnapped by an alien assassin and dragged off to an internment camp for several months of extended torture and interrogation. This is why you never listen to a squirrel girl. This has been a public service announcement by the Perfidious Pete's Dream Crushing Theater, by the way. Perfidious Pete, always ready to rain on your parade at a moment's notice. How come we were looking at Joe Hill earlier? Because, you know, he's a badass with a 6 to 1 kill to mission ratio, and I thought he deserved some accolades. Don't look so down, Joe, buddy. Man, you're doing great. You're having a great career. Anyway, let's go uh, find ourselves a mission. I'm sure we're going to get prompted probably to go try and rescue dipshit in some capacity. Okay, so we got uh, more people teleporting in. All right, assassin. I don't know what the hell you are, but you got a kicking hairstyle. Her, we're familiar with. I like your hood, though. That's a good look for you. What the hell is that gun? It would be so easy. Why are the aliens pointing guns at each other? So we got melee assassin. We got marksman assassin. All right. I'm assuming psychic assassin. All right, so we got the Seluxus, the Vindicary, and the Calidus here squaring off in the Assassin's Temple. Where's the Eversore? Guy never gets any love, I'm telling you. Everybody hates the Eversore Assassin. we are agreed. The battlefield has shifted. Our masters have need of us once more. Personally, I think they just want to check out that kick and hairstyle of yours because it looks pretty badass. You dare. Oh, I dare. 
Oh, he's the bad boy of the group. I get it. He's the good looking rebel who plays by his own rules. Well, mommy's home. They're all getting a timeout. Blessed with filed teeth that are chopped down to a point? Oh, I mean, you got that girl. Why are you showing them footage of their successes if you're going to upbraid them for failure? Is this one of those uh, management technique things where you say a good thing about an employee and then a bad thing about an employee so they feel both uplifted as you run them down like simultaneously and give them some cognitive dissonance? Oh, look at him smiling as he watches his brother get spanked by mommy. I can already tell I don't like the psychic assassin. That guy's a dick. Also, once again, we see the good looking rebel who plays by his own rules getting smacked down by the police captain. That a fact. Why did you come here at all, by the way? Your motives are murky and non specific. Ah, installing them as planetary governor. Gotcha. I'm thinking none of them are worthy and all of them are going to eat a bullet at the hands of XCOM. I really like their big purple room. Commander, it's very grandiose. Just made contact with a new faction of the resistance known, known as, as the, the Reapers. Reapers. They're an elusive bunch, but this is their headquarters. We can scan at this location now to start benefiting from our newfound cooperation. Okay, I'm Phantom Stalkers. New faction orders granted. Light Strike Scavengers. Covert actions now available in the ring. Hunt the Chosen Assassin Part 1. Rescue Soldiers, Squaddy, Praetal Mox. Resistance order. I had some concerns with this alliance of yours, but from what I hear, this skirmisher, Mox, was captured protecting one of my own. Actually, he was captured clapping his hands because he believed it would bring Tinkerbell back to life, but sure, saving a Reaper, why not? So, Resistance Faction located. Reapers, Phantom Stalkers. New Faction orders granted. I mean, I guess this is a mission then? No. Chosen revealed. Fal El Baladur, Shadow Queen. Commander, the Resistance has informed us that one of the Chosen, Fal El Baladur, has claimed control of nearby regions. If we go on missions in this area, there's a good chance they will try to defend their territory. So if we go do missions up there, we gotta fight her? Understood. Alright then, so we have a scanning site, which is supplies in North America. We kinda need Reaper HQ will get us intel. And also, possibly missions? New Mexico Assassin. Plus one. What is this? Okay, so we've got the Advent Black site, which we're in no hurry to go to. Let's go grab these supplies, I guess. And then we'll come back here and scan this. We really could use some supplies. We're going to have some facilities we need to build. We also just need some time to pass and see if we can get a couple of our soldiers Another less tired. Step forward. In our research. Hybrid Materials has completed. Fantastic, Dr. Tygen. It's, um, you know, that guy I sent down, Jin Shin, to keep an eye on you. Seems to be doing a good job. We can build plated armor, which we're not going to do. Science team has grown particularly interested in this field of Experimental research. weapons so inspired. That their inspiration could lead to vast improvements in our research efficiency. Okay. However, we must act fast. Despite their brilliance, they are a fickle group. So you're talking about yourself, Dr. Tiger. In other words, what you said is, man, I went down there and looked at the experimental weapons and one of them sort of looked vaguely phallic and I was like, man, I would like to probe some shit with that. And you're suddenly inspired to do... Okay, fine, Dr. Tiger. Let's see, inspired, which means, okay, inspiration apparently halves the amount of research time required or at least lowers it dramatically. So since this is only five days and Dr. Tiger is inspired to probe alien buttholes with a newfound toy... Yep, science is eager to begin. Well, let the science begin then, Dr. Tigan. Don't let me get in the way of your probing. I'm just the guy organizing the defense of the human species from a rampaging alien onslaught. 
I'm assuming, and I'm going to test this theory. Joe Hill has recovered from his wounds. Okay, hold on. Stop scanning. Stop scanning from What are you talking about? We kicked the shit out of you. I shot you in the stomach and you ran away like a little bitch. You got whomped by a Stephen King grenade, took a shotgun to the face and a sniper round to the midsection and then ran away like a little girl. If I'd gotten the rest of my turn, you'd been dead. Like four health left. Shit biscuit talking smack to me. Uh, I wanted what I want to do was pause scanning for a minute because I wanted to come down here and see if we could get a hand on how this fatigue mechanic works. Okay, so we understand exactly how it works. When you get tired, apparently you get a number of days of tiredness, and tiredness appears to reduce our willpower. It doesn't seem to have any other specific effect. It just lowers our willpower. Chuck is tired for eight days. So I'm guessing after you go on a mission, you get a willpower penalty, and then your willpower slowly recovers over time. Seems to be how that mechanic works. And some of our other troops who were tired on that mission no longer appear to be tired. So it's just you take, like, willpower damage, which is cool, because that means soldiers with a higher willpower will be more resilient to fatigue, I think. So we picked up 40 supplies here. It costs us 80. We have 88. What is a resistance ring? The resistance ring allows managing covert actions and coordinating with the resistance factions. I mean, I really want to build that, but I also really want to build a guerrilla tactics school. How much does a power relay cost? 80 supplies. We're going to need one of those, but we want that in a position where we can make our workshop work it. I think we build that. Unstaffed engineer who can assist, would you like to assign them here? How long will it take him to build it if we put Santiago on the case? Santiago on the case makes that take seven days. We really could use this infirmary, but honestly, what I'd rather do, can we clear this? We could. Now that members of the resistance factions have joined us on the Avenger. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I thought you might want an area where you can meet uh -huh. to organize and plan future operations together. Yep. Commander, that's, I'm going to need sounds great. You know, I'm working on it, Lily. So it takes five days to clear this. It takes 14 days for us to build a GTS. If we unassign, I'm just trying to most effectively use my resources here. If we unassign Santiago here, our one man who's down here working with a shovel nonstop day and night, you have to have an engineer to excavate. So, okay. It takes him five days to do that. If we assign him to this, we lose those five days, admittedly, but we're going to get our GTS then in seven. So we could complete both of these projects in 12 days if we assign him, let it build the GTS, and then bring him over here. Alternatively, we could get the alien debris cleared, have him start digging another hole, and let the GTS sort of work on its own. You know what? Hand it to the aliens. The invasion was uh -huh. I really want to start training. So you know what? No, I want the GTS done first. I really want to start training rookies. Even with better gear, between the propaganda, the handouts, and the seemingly endless supply of reinforcing peacekeepers, they're nothing but trouble for an upstart resistance movement. Why? It's as if they were policing the populace to stop our guerrilla slash terrorist actions. What a surprise! You know, just because you're a freedom fighter, Bradford, doesn't necessarily mean the enemy team is uh, is supposed to just give up and lay down. Be like, oh, well, you know, they're a noble guerrilla force of freedom fighters. I guess it's wrong for us to try and maintain law and order. You can disagree with their policies, but don't be confused by them. That's just stupid. Experimental weapons research is complete. What does that get us? New Proving Ground project available. Boltcaster, Hunter's Axe, Shadow Keeper, and a Frost Bomb. I love all of those things. And we can't build any of them because we don't have a proving ground. Technology breakthrough, resistance ring construction. We made a startling breakthrough that has led us to another potential avenue of study. All right, However, sure. If we are to proceed down this path, we must do so immediately, or I fear we will. Bradford, stop making your case, man. I'm already sold. You, you don't need to try and be like, oh, but you should really buy this cow. The milk is delicious, and it turns out it's got great benefits for you. I was like, fine, you had me at cow, Bradford. Just stop talking here, Tigan. I will make that our highest priority. Congratulations. Let's go back to scanning. Here. Got some new mechanics working here. So there apparently are chains of research, which is interesting, but I'd really like to get to mag weapons as quickly as possible. If Strategic resource located. 48 supplies. Okay, fly back Setting to Reaper HQ. The Mexican regional tracks. Reaper HQ just gets... Okay, so this is basically our old school... 
scan at your own headquarters. Uh, yes, we need another engineer desperately. So let's go grab ourselves a second engineer here. Complete autopsy research, research resistance communications. I want to do all of those things. I'm assuming the Avatar project, by the way. We'll need to pay close attention to these chosen, Commander. They each seem to have unique... Sorry, I saw a new button and I was forced to click it. Avoid. So, unknown chosen, unknown chosen. So we haven't encountered the other two. Got it. Knowledge. We have not even a full... Soldiers interrogated, zero soldiers captured, one. Hunt progress. I don't know what that means. We know her strengths. We know her weaknesses. Reaper's Phantom Stalker. We know she has another ability called Vanishing Wind, by the way, which means runs away like a coward when injured. I'm actually not firing shots at her. It was definitely the right move to make. She was in a losing scenario. It's just, you know what? That's effective project management right there. It's what we were talking about at the beginning of the episode. The enemy assassin looked at the situation and said, you know what? The numbers just don't add up. Let's evacuate before the tidal wave gets here. And rather than staying and dying futilely, she's just like, well, we're going to beat it. So we completed one guerrilla op, one resistance op, investigated two rumors, researched three technologies, and got ourselves an extra 150 supplies. Chosen activity. Oh, so they've gotten rid of dark events then and replaced them with this. I love this mechanic a thousand times more than Dark Events. It's universally better. Retribution, a brutal crackdown and a resistance permanently lowering XCOM's income. That's her planned activity? Okay. Commander, we have the other two unchosen are unknown and are doing stuff. Our ability to stop the Avatar project. We can conduct guerrilla operations. Oh, they still have dark events. Well, son of a bitch. But we'll have to choose carefully. We don't have the resources to intercede everywhere. All right. Spider and fly. There is a risk of ambush on all covert actions. Don't like that. Advent crackdown on resistance recruitment, increasing the cost of recruits by 100% for each month. Don't give a single shit about that. I'll let that one go any day of the week. Spider and fly sounds terrible, though. Commander, the factions have pledged their support to XCOM. Each month, the resistance factions can be assigned orders, which will provide bonuses to XCOM. As XCOM gains influence with the factions, additional orders will become available, and they will be able to complete more orders per month. All right, I'm liking this. Scavengers. Okay, so we got the Reapers on our side. They want to do what? All resource rewards from scanned rumors are doubled. Resistance orders are a powerful strategic ability unique to each faction. Resistance orders can only be activated at the end of each month. Lightning Strike. Units gain plus three mobility for the first two turns of battle while the squad remains concealed. Resist. Yeah, okay. Wild card orders. Any faction order. Huh. Raise influence through the ring. So you're locked, but we can do one wild card order. All right. Well, scavengers, I think. Lightning Strike is not bad. I do like it. But scavengers, all just this just seems way better. All resource rewards from any scan rumors are doubled. Like in. If we go scan this engineer, are we going to get two engineers instead of one? Commander, we'll need to send our own soldiers out to work with the resistance factions to complete these covert actions. Since when? We'll be gone for a few days, but this will help us build influence with the resistance while generating material support. So we have to assign soldiers to do this stuff? Okay, fine. Soldier reward plus one mobility. So we need a sergeant in order to do this. Increase faction influence. Okay, what else can we do? Rescue soldiers, squatty, prey tile mocks. Personnel extraction. My people were born to hunt, to track, and pursue our prey undetected. Send a few of your soldiers to help, and I'm sure we'll have no problem figuring out where Fall Ildura took squatty, prey tile mocks. New this locate faction. Require some field experience, Commander. We'll need to send one of our vets to lead the. Oh, we could get a soldier promoted. So if we go for find the Templars, it takes nine days, and nothing happens. Got it. Increase income, helping hand. Soldier gets five will for completing this. It also increases our home region income by 13 supplies, but again, we need a sergeant or better to do that. Any soldier can help. Somebody could get plus five hacking for six days of investment. Hunt the Chosen, part one. The Chosen the Elders of Sin are nothing if not persistent. From what I've heard, you're the new prized bounty and are doing everything they can to find that ship of yours. The Assassin has been especially irritating lately, so I say we pool our resources and find out where that thing calls home. I don't expect they'll take this sitting down. I hope your people are ready to it for a fight. Not yet. What I'd really rather do is go rescue Mox. So let's send Lauren Bukes to do this, and then also send her back up. I'm thinking maybe J.K. Rowling. Because they're a bonded pair, right? Commander, the 
Resistance has yeah. a hidden cache of resources stacked Hold on, go back to Reaper. Yeah. Reach. No. But that means we'll have to fly Wait, over how do I get back to the... We want to is that this? That's this. Ourselves. Okay, lightning strike. I mean, we already did that. How do I get back to the thing? Oh, okay, here we go. Commander, Mox has been captured. We should do everything we can to get Yes, Bradford, I'm trying to figure out your interface. Can you give me a second here? Just like, I gotta go look at the personnel sheets. I'm doing good project management here. I'm looking at the numbers, Bradford. So we weren't, we're gonna send, we're gonna send Rowling and Bukes then. I don't know if this can spawn a mission, but I have a very strong suspicion that this could probably spawn a mission and that we've got local resistance forces I'm working on it. Contact, but we'll have to make the first move. Oh, that's actually not what I wanted to do at all. So can we assign people to every one of these? So we're going to send Lauren Bukes here, and we're going to send J.K. Rowling with her. Confirm action. Begin action. I'll order my people to get underway immediately. Okay, so we can do all of these. So this one is underway. The Reapers can do... Nope, we can only do one covert action. Man, I kind of wanted to locate the Templars too. All right, well, you know, it is what it is. The stockade. Let's go grab these supplies. Avengers Which, do we get double support. supplies since we're doing the double thing? Are we going to get more than 150? Do we get 300 for scanning this? Is that how that works? Nothing on the local comms. Oh, I guess we're going to do a Haven defense. Quiet. All right, well. I'm guessing we have you to thank for that. Our pleasure, Den Mother. Enjoy it while it Because it's going to last for about another 92 seconds, and then you're going to be emulated in a giant, deadly explosion. It's global. Sir, I think you want to see this. Really, all Bradford needs to see is this hair. Look at that hair. For so beautiful. For years, the Advent Coalition has worked tirelessly to repair the ravages and injustices uh -huh. of the old world. Under our stewardship, our cities. No, actually, under your stewardship, Paul Ryan, nothing is getting done because you guys can't even agree on your agenda. Yet, you have a Republican president, the House, us, and Congress, and you still, still can't get any legislation passed. To acknowledge the truth, who are determined to see. All that we have achieved. Yep, better distract the people by firing weapons at North Korea. That'll work. That must end. Even as I speak to you today, you've got incoming on approach. Your signal's breaking up. Oh, you're dead then. Sorry. Maybe turn around and look. No, that's fine. Don't make any kind of evacuations. Just fiddle with the fiddle with the antenna. That'll stop the incoming ships from killing. Oh no, wait, it didn't stop them at all. This is why you got to stop hiring moxie heroes, Bradford. I keep telling you, this is what happens when you think that chutzpah is enough to produce triumph. They don't stand a chance. They were totally unprepared. We should get a squad ready to deploy. They're already in the. They're already in the tubes, Bradford. They're already ready. Oh, faceless, right? Forgot about those. You know what, Zoidberg? Shake it for me. Country alien, shake it for me, baby, shake it for me. Love it when Zoidberg shakes that booty. All right, yep, yeah, we're we're on this, Bradford. It's fine. Let's go do this. Operation Ventral Blade. Will? There's a good chance they'll show up to interfere, so we should plan accordingly. They're gonna show up to interfere with the retaliation mission. Well, that's gonna make this dramatically more difficult, then, isn't it? All right, Joe Hill. I like you on the mission. I don't really like two snipers. We're going to be fighting on this mission. Being... Oh, you know what? Now, hold on a second. Now that I think about this, this is actually a fantastic team. Super infiltrator squad site sniper. There's some real potential for mayhem there. All right, you guys got to get out of here. Cherry Priest, we'll, you know, we'll be back to you in a minute. Who else is ready? Chuck Windig is available but tired. I mean, it's looking like we're going to have to take a pair of rookies. Bukes and Rowling are on a covert action. Charlie Houston is still hurt. You know what, Wendig? I think I think you're going to have to fight tired on this one. I'm sorry, buddy. We'll get you a good long rest, but without Stephen King in the mix, we really need you on this one. You're going to have to fight tired, bud. And then who are we going to bring in? We got Chuck Survivor Polaniak, Neil the Alchemist Stevenson. We could bring in the handmaid Margaret Atwood. Neil Gaiman could be ready there to send some people to sleep. You know what? Cherry Priest was on this mission. Let's take Cherry Priest. Give him the hatchet job. I'm down with it. Let's do this. I don't suppose we can edit your profile, could we? I would love to make you an author. Can we change your name? <gasps> we can. All right. Well, you're not going to be Elena Outrider Dragonova for much longer. We'll come in and customize you in a minute. But for now, let's go do the mission. 
I'm sorry to make you fight tired, Chuck. But hey, think about it. I mean, it took you what, like three years to write your first novel and then you wrote the sequel to that novel in like a month? Just, you know, consider this the slog that you had to do to get through that debut novel to produce that really, really better, much better second novel. Chuck Wendig, sophomore effort, real good. Let's just hope he doesn't wind up double dead. That would really suck. I want to see how this dynamic works. If we can get the super infiltrator to go forward and have Joe Hill sit up on a hilltop somewhere and just snipe shit out of people. Just sitting back, raining deadly bombs from across the map. If we can make that work, that'll be fantastic. Because remember, this is a retaliation mission, so there is no time limit on this one. On the downside, however, we're not going to have a team that's really, really good at fighting the Chosen. So we're going to want to try and save one of Chuck Windig's grenades. If the Chosen appears, goes for cover, we have Windig whack it with a grenade, and then we have Cherry Priest. One of those chosen is yeah, and I think we'll have Cherry Priest and uh, Joe Hill try and light her up. Our people are doing what they can to fight back, but we need to help protect the civilians trapped nearby. There's a group of resistance soldiers hunkered down not far from your position. Move in and help fend off the attacking alien forces. Okay, this is actually entirely different than what we were expecting. So this mission does not work the same as the... Okay, so retaliation missions are considerably different now. Okay, what do you got here, Dragon? You got remote start, you got your claymore, you got all your base abilities. You are already concealed. So let's get you up here. I go where you tell me. There's an alien patrol nearby. Okay, you've spotted them, which is perfect. So we could have Joe Hill. I mean, he can take a shot from here. And that stun lancer is extraordinarily far away. So let's have Chuck Windig step up to this rock. Rolling out. I kind of feel like we want to we want to take that shot. Cherry Priest, let's get you a little closer as well. We'd like you to be in some some form of cover. You know what? You're going to have to double move, Cherry. Get you up here. I'm kind of thinking maybe we take the shot with Joe Hill. He's so far away. There's no way this stun lancer's going to You know what? Take the shot, Joe. There it is! One shot, one kill. Joe Hill did not finish him off, actually. At first, Advent deployed non-lethal stun units for crowd control and the occasional protest. We don't see a whole lot of that anymore. Okay, well, that didn't really work out for us at all. They've got units in the AO that are ignoring our forces just to get a better shot at the civilians. Take those bastards down. Okay, well, it turns out that was a magnificently terrible idea. Yeah, we're we're in a real bad scenario here. All right, so Outrider, can you get up here and like rescue these civilians, maybe? I will reposition. Oh, we're just supposed to defend these people. Got it. All right, Joe Hill. Okay, Chuck. Has a shot, it's just a really bad one. If we bring Chuck over around on the other side of this fence, though, he should be able to eliminate the sectoid. He's got a six flank shot at only 69%. Why is your aim suddenly so terrible, Chuck? I mean, you gotta take it. Sounds like a hit. Chuck Wendig getting work done puts a man in the dirt. All right, we need a shot at this... Uh, we need a shot at the stun lancer, but we also need cover. We cannot see. I mean, we can see the stun lancer from here for Cherry Priest. It's just going to be a really, really long shot. 66% is not great, but Cherry Priest is not going to give us anything else, so let's take it. Ass over tea kettle. Stun lancer is down. All right, Joe Hill. In one ability, one ability point from a flank. Okay, so Joe Hill cannot get a shot at Sectoid. Is he going to be visible to the Sectoid from this tile? He will not. He will be in full cover. Can we get Joe Hill a rooftop shot? He'll be able to see the Sectoid from there, which actually I don't want. Elena. 
You only have a 66% chance to see that guy, and that gives us a very good chance of you being revealed. I don't like that. This guy's not near anything that we can explode. We can blow that up. Oh, we can use this to blow up cars! Okay, I I actually love that ability already. I really do. Also, you're concealed, and this man doesn't know where you are. Can you throw a proximity? Nope, can't get it out there. All right, let's get you over here. I am at your service. Joe Hill, I really want to get you up here, but you can definitely, you can hard see that guy from that tile. We do not want that. What about this tile? But when you move there, you'll get spotted. What about here? That tile is on fire, so that seems like a bad idea. Can't see anything from there. What about here? Well, you can't. S we need you in a position where you're going to be able to get a shot at him at some point. Though. I really want you to have the height elevation, but we can't make it happen right now. On the move. This sectoid is going to start killing civilians, though, because I think he's active. I wish there was a way we could get up there without triggering the sectoid. I really do. We could try and go revive one of our down troopers because one of those guys isn't dead. They're just unconscious. You know what? Joe moved to here. Moving to designated We're struggling to pick up some of these new mechanics. Okay, you are suddenly active. You spotted Joe Hill. Oh, okay. You scampered. And that was your only action was a scamper? That's all you got. Just a scamper. All right, well, you're, you're definitely going to be dead then because Chuck Windig's going to come over here. It's not a flank shot, though. Chuck, can you get, Chuck cannot get a flank. Cherry, can you get a flanker? You cannot. You can eliminate this cat's cover, though. If you do that, Joe Hill will take him down. That's or the perfect. combination of Joe Hill and Chuck Windig, they'll be able to they'll be able to muster up a kill. So please don't drop a grenade on these civilians. Also, if you could not destroy their cover, that would be extraordinarily useful as well. We may have just grenaded one of our own civilians. may have done that 79 percent there for our boy joe we do have elena if we need like an emergency situation okay chuck will have a flank shot from here let's move chuck up to full Moving cover to take the shot charles 71 percent. i'm just doubling up here we want lots of backup shots and that's exactly why we need an abundance of backup shots all right so joe hill My ammo's running low. sniper him down Excellent work, everyone. I got nothing. Well, then I guess it's up to Elena. Did four damage. And revealed herself. Perfect. Fortunately, the sectoid took a shot at a civilian miss. It didn't move either. That's really odd behavior for the AI. It just sat there and died. I mean, it's just, There's he's done. There's a large group of civilians pinned down within range of your position. Sensors indicate hostile forces are closing in fast. How am I supposed to get all the fucking way over there, Bradford? I got a little bit of a sectoid problem here. That's a long bit of a run. I only have four troopers here. Admittedly, I should have more because probably I should have made an effort to save those guys, but didn't. Come on, Chuck. Don't muck this one. There we go. Oh, loot. So did we save them? Team is in the clear. They're moving to help the other survivors. They are? Because it looked to me like they were running the shit away at a furious pace. All right, we're definitely going to shadow. It's time to focus. We're going to have you. We need you out scouting. So get as far, get as All close to that enemy okay. resistance unit as we can. One thing I got to say I do like about the Reapers, they are super, super greasy fast, which is really great. The speed and the concealment really combos together nicely. Cherry Priest, I want you grabbing this loot. Loot recovery. Okay, picked up an Illyrium core and an alien data cache. Not our best performance ever, admittedly, but, you know, I mean, we're, we're doing okay. Joe Hill, I want to get you up somewhere high. There's nowhere high for you to be, and in fact, the only place you can even have cover is here. Dragonova, give us that dank 411. You're our info specialist. Resistance activity consists of nothing? Oh, these guys, what are you doing? 
went over and took a shot at a stun lancer. So resistance activity is not something we get to control. These guys just do stuff. Got it. Specifically, they do monumentally stupid stuff, like going over and shooting at stun lancers and getting themselves killed instead of saying hunkered in their bunker and maybe taking some overwatch shots. On the plus side, they seem to be remarkably accurate. And Lena could get to the rooftop. If she gets to this rooftop, she might be able to spot for Joe Hill. If she goes there, she's gonna set herself on fire. Well, I'm I am quite a fan of the not being on fire part of the I don't like that. She can't see anything. We know there's a guy over there, and we know there are guys over there. Come up here and take this full cover and see if you can spot for Joe Hill. Patrol is coming. Okay, so we got stun lancers over there. Joe is not in a great position. Chuck Windig is out of ammo. We're going to move Chuck forward. Just reload, Charles. Good to go. You're no good to anybody with no bullets, buddy. It really seems like Lauren Bukes needs to make uh, an end zone run here. Is she going to be spotted? No, those guys are way too far away. Like Nothing can see you here, right? No, we have no target read. Excellent. All right, run up there next to that oh, raid paging yeah, bonfire. Nice. Joe Hill, I want to get you in an elevated position so you can start taking long-range sniper shots. You would have a squad sight shot on that man. At any point along his movement, do you get spotted? You do not. Okay, get on, get on this, Joe. Getting it done. We want you ready to act. Okay, these guys are moving in. They saw the resistance guy, I think. Okay, so they saw the resistance personnel. They moved up. We got... Oh, this guy's good. Get... Kathleen McDonald, no! Heir to the McDonald's fortune. Who will maintain the golden arches in your absence? All right, so a bunch of our civilians are getting brutalized here. Resistance activity. You guys want to chuck a, chuck a grenade at that dude. Throw a grenade at him. Throw a grenade at him. All right, well, still, good shot. I mean, you're doing pathetic damage, but great shot. Okay, another good shot. Resistance personnel doing a little bit of heavy lifting here. Softening up some stun lancers. Actually, most importantly, what this resistance personnel is doing is giving us an idea of where the enemies are. So what if we do this? Like if I throw this, if we take our claymore out here. Nope. Okay, so we could detonate the truck. Yeah, the one Joe Hill is standing on. Fantastic idea. This is enormously huge. This does 12 damage. So like that straight up kills that dude and does not reveal us. Does it end our turn? That's the question. Will this end our turn? Don't blow up that one. Let's test this theory. Does this end our turn? This will get their attention. It does, in fact, end our turn. All right, well, that's unfortunate. So Cherry Priest has a shot at one of these stun lancers. It's a remarkably bad shot. Joe Hill, meanwhile, also has not a fantastic shot and is now exposed and potentially flanked. Chuck, are you going to be able to see anything from here? Absolutely not. That's okay, though. We're going to bring you up here, Charles, and we'll maybe put you on Overwatch. Actually, you still got two grenades. You can... Oh, you know what? Yeah. To toss the Granado. Get it out there. If you get the grenade down, long wind, get it deep, open that up, get rid of that cover. Cherry Priest has got a shot and possibly even Joe Hill has a shot. Our boy's standing out in the open, dick in hand now. Cherry Priest got a shot. Cherry, take him down. She's putting him out of his misery like he lived in Maplecroft. All right. So Joe Hill cannot see the other stun lancer. Joe, I'm just, we're going to take this easy here. I'm going to bring you, I mean, I'd love to get you up here, actually. Potentially, you might get spotted over there, though, and I don't like that. You know what? Let's bring Joe Hill over here. I know he's only got one bullet, but Joe Hill is the world's greatest sniper. One shot, one kill. 
It's the sniper motto. Joe. Oh, uh, that turned out very badly for us. Yeah, it's, it's actually bad. Okay, resistance. It's time for. You let a faceless in the church, guys. That's. About some kind of shapeshifters. Well, he's gonna kill like three people. Stun Lancer coming up, taking a shot. You're they're butchering the civilians, though. They're not even shooting at the other resistance person. Oh, never mind. Homegirl takes it like a champ. Look at that, though. Took it on the chin, staying strong. She doesn't even give a shit. Maybe shoot at the faceless, though. No, nah, that's fine. Just, yeah, keep shooting at the stun lancers. These guys, we need them on the XCOM team, though. They're hitting some real low percentage shots. Do damage, which that guy is going to heal, I think, at the start of his turn. So that did effectively nothing. No, don't take the point blank flank shot at the stun lancer. Don't even do that. All right, well, all of these things are very bad for us. So we could get some definite... You actually cannot see that guy? Oh, that's bad. All right, Chuck. We can bring you over here. What are you going to be able to see? Probably just the faceless. Not necessarily a bad thing. And there's really nothing else Charles is going to be able to do without accidentally killing someone. Not a great chance to hit, but if he can land it, it'll be a coup. Let's go for it. There's nothing else Charles is going to be able to give us. Six sweet damage from that big minigun. Cherry Priest has a flank shot. You know what, Cherry? I think you should probably close in, although that puts you dangerously close to that stun lancer. Maybe closing in is a bad idea. It's still a flank shot right there. Whereas, no, that's probably on the faceless, actually. What's your hit percentage from here? 70 is not that good. What about from here? It's got to be better. Heather now. It also puts you in full cover, which I appreciate. 78, so it's better, but only very slightly. Still good enough for Cherry Priest to rack the kill. Though. Joe Hill. Take the shot. Sniper him down. Right through his brain? Question mark? That's some remarkable penetration power, by the way, on your uh, on your sniper rifle. I'd just like to point out. Okay, so there is a stun lancer right there. So what we want to do is get in a position where we can throw a grenade in a proximity mine into his tile. That's actually a box. Where's the stun lancer, though? Stun lancer is right there. So if we come to this corner. This is only a blue move. We should be able to pitch this through the window of that and set it off to get the stun lancer. So we go proximity mine and drop it right in his face. Placing I'm still trying to understand how these proximity mines work 100%. I don't fully get them. But like if he moves, that should detonate. No, I don't understand how proximity mines work at all. Why did that not detonate? So clearly proximity mines aren't proc claymore mines are not proximity mines and that I think maybe they have to actually step on them to get them to go off. Like they can't you have to they have to step straight on top of a claymore. One of the resistance soldiers finally missed a shot. Only two left, which is problematic. We can remote start more than once. Okay, so remote start may be like the greatest ability of all time because it means at any point, if someone is near an explodable, we can just kill them. Eh, Chuck Windig. The guy is on fire, man. Got him. Chuck Windig also gaining one ability point from a flank shot. All right, so Cherry Priest, we're going to bring you up here to this corner full cover. You're going to reload. Joe Hill, you're going to reload and go on Overwatch. Uh, Dragonova, same thing for you. Reload and Overwatch. I'm not sure what we're on the lookout for, really. Resistance. Well, the Resistance, you know what? They'll go find them for us. 
They know where the bad guys are. Go scout them out there, champ. Two damage on... Is that just a regular Advent Soldier? Go get a flank shot on him. Oh, she had to reload. Alright. Well, that's okay. Come out here, Dragonova, and get us get us eyes. Well, I mean, it's... it's not, I don't know if you can call it a patrol. It's actually just one man. Don't suppose Joe Hill has or can get a shot at that guy anywhere? Everywhere Joe Hill goes, he can only see a remote explosive. What if he goes down? I mean, even a pistol shot might be enough to get the job done. How about Cherry Priest? Can you get a can you get a firing solution? Nope. Again, all you can shoot is the all you're gonna be able to shoot is the mine. He's gonna make a move at this guy. What we'd like to be able to do is in a position where, if he makes a move on that guy, we could maybe get an Overwatch shot. How come we can't see him from that location, huh? Move to this corner. Moving. Just take an overwatch. Got it covered. Joe, I guess we'll just move you over here and put you on overwatch. I think this may be the last dude on the map, and it sort of shames me, but I'm actually content to let the resistance do the heavy lifting on this one. I'm coming to save your haven. The least you guys could do is, you know, sort of be party to your own salvation. I'm giving you guys an opportunity to prove your worth here. Like, I didn't do anything. Uh, just overwatch in case he steps on you. Alright, resistance. Did you get two damage on this guy? Alright, gonna reload. He reloads and shoots! He delivers. Man, we need to... Oh, well, okay. We need to recruit that man to the project. So, we saved 14 out of 19 civilians. That feels pretty good. Took 9 turns, killed 10 enemies. How many soldiers were wounded? None. Nobody got killed. Rating flawless. Give me a mission photo here. Hell yeah. Veni, Vidi, Vici. They came, they saw, they had some Vici. Do we want to take this photo? Let's rotate this slightly. A little more... Get it up. We got to go with the Facebook profile. You always want to have a dramatic camera angle. How do we zoom? Zoom out. We can know we can't zoom out. We're as far out as out goes. Man, Chuck Windig's looking surprisingly badass right there, I'm not gonna lie. No. Alright, let's move you to a different location. Oh, there we go. The aliens will know fear. A high angle, man. Facebook profile photos have told me you always, always... Oh, we can pan this. You always go for the high angle shot. There it is. Ah. <sighs> Every one of those is just like a little victory lap. It's surprising how much satisfaction such a minor mechanic as a mission photo adds to the gameplay. It really is. That our peacekeepers will stop at nothing. To prevent further attacks by criminal elements such as the one that occurred today. You know, Paul Ryan, technically you're right. We are criminals, but still. Dealt the most damage, Chuck Blackbird Windig. Successful shot percentage, 83.33. Made the most attacks, Chuck Blackbird Windig. Elena Outrider Dragonova moved the farthest. I do think I kind of like the sharpshooter forward spotting capabilities that you get with your Reaper slash Sniper combo. It seems pretty good. The ability to generate long-range damage. Chuck Windig picking up. All right, Chuck Windig is shaken. Most cohesion, most cohesion. Bond available. Who can you bond with, Chuck? You can bond with Reaper. Well, no. I mean, it's nice that it's available, but she really needs to be bonded with Mox, I kind of feel like. Cherry Priest is a sniper. Well, I would have chosen pretty much any other class. Nice to see Chuck Windig picking up a promotion, though. We're going to give Windig Shredder. Hopefully, his promotion will give us time to get uh, Stephen King out of the hospital. Picked up an Illyrium Core and a Data Cache, two Sectoid Corpses, six Stunlancer Corpses, a Faceless, and one Advent Trooper Corpse. Rescued 14 civilians. Bolstered the resistance, increasing income in their region. All right, sweet. Data cache decryption, check, check. Faceless autopsy, also Another check. Impressive effort. Yeah, I did a good My job, didn't I, Optimus Prime? And yet you have 
exceeded them. Income increased by 42 bonus supplies for the month. Rest required. Combat has taken an extreme mental toll on this soldier. They will not be available for deployment until they have rested on the Avengers. Okay, will do. I mean, you, you know what, Chuck? You, you earned some time. What is this? Yeah, I know you want to bond with Dragonova, but I don't know. You, you guys don't compliment each other very well. I want her to bond with, like, well, jo Joe Hill really needs to bond with his dad. I'm so conflicted because, uh, why is this paused? Oh, we got our boy, right, we got our boy working on something else. But I'm so conflicted because it feels like Joe Hill and Stephen King should definitely be bonded soldiers. But Joe Hill and Elena Dragonova make much better sense. Alternatively, I suppose we could always turn to Lega Dragonova and make her into Tabitha King. Also a writer, so she fits the theme and his mom. We'd have the whole damn King family on here. Is it a, 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 a foundation of a dynasty, really? Hmm. I have to mull that over between episodes. Right now, I'm going to wrap this one up. If you enjoyed it, feel free to drop a like down in the comment section. Of course, support does mean a lot. If you want to see the founding of that literary empire, you might consider subscribing as well. New episodes of War of the Chosen every single day. Right now, thanks very much for watching. I'll see you again soon.